Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. It's time for a Twit Live special number 174, the Xbox One Teardown. Hey, everybody, Leo Laporte here, and it's time once again to break down something brand new. Our uh, great iFixit team is online, Gwendolyn Gay and Miro Durek. Hello, guys. Hello. Hi. Good to see you once again. This time, we are tearing down an Xbox One. We are. We're very excited. Um, this is a pretty fun teardown, actually, because um, it's not too difficult. We really like yeah. this one, so we're <laughs> excited to show you guys. You think it's easier <laughs> than the PS4 we did last week? A little uh, bit. Yeah, to, to some extent. Um, the we, PS4, I still wear the scars from that because yeah. I did the original. Yeah, you know, yeah, you cut yeah. yourself on that plastic... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. because, yeah. you know, when, whenever we open these things up, we don't know what's underneath or how it's assembled up until we tear it apart. So, are you? Uh, yeah, uh, as I was yanking it, it just... Uh, I caught my finger, so yeah. Yeah, when we did it last week, uh, uh, we were much more careful. We knew, we knew, yeah. we knew you'd been injured. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I already told everybody like, be very careful when you're doing that other half of the top. Now, have you ever torn? Have you done an Xbox One yourself, Mira, before? Uh, no, actually, uh, first this time. This particular uh, one is already a little bit disassembled, as you can see. Uh, but uh, our teardown team was actually went to New Zealand last time. So they were part of the first, I don't know, 10 people in the world to actually receive their Xboxes in New Zealand. Wow, that's great. Well, I have my Xbox One at home, and I ain't tearing it down. I like it. Uh, but, <laughs> but I am looking forward to, to seeing the teardown. First, though, Eli's bringing me my iFixit toolkit because I like to follow along at home the home version of the iFixit game. So I have a feeling I won't need all of these tools. I certainly am. Uh, I doubt I'll need all 54 bits on my driver kit. You know, I got to thank you. I don't know, Gwendolyn, I think you sent me this because I was really admiring as, as we were pulling the screws, uh, you, were, you were putting them on this magnetic mat and writing down. And I thought, wow. I really want one of those, and you sent me one, so thank you, Gwendolyn. Yeah, we love our magnetic mat, and we're, we'll be using it for this one, but um, the PS4 had quite a bit more uh, in the way of screws, so we still will be using it, but just not as much. Um, the great thing about our magnetic mat is, of course, it comes with your dry erase marker, and you can keep track of everything, but it's also magnetic only on one side, which is uh, pretty cool, so it's not going to stick to any magnetic tables. I was anything. really thrilled. I'm uh, unreasonably thrilled to get this. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm just, really pleased. I, I like probably it. never use it, but I got it, and that's the thing. No, it often happens, and I'll use the lid of a shoebox or something to hold the screws, but they roll around, and you don't know where they go, and a lot of times, even if you're just taking apart a laptop, um, there are some longer screws in one in one corner, shorter screws in another corner. And it really is important to keep track of what came from what part of the laptop. So this is actually really useful. So where do we begin? Okay. So um, what we did already, and you know, this is a little bit of cheating, but we <laughs> wanted to spare you the forty minutes of prying, if in case it ended up being that way. So, oh, so there, it can be sometimes. Yeah, so this console is pretty interesting where the PS4, you have kind of um, some clear starting points on where, uh, you know, where, what to start taking apart. Uh, with the Xbox, it's not immediately apparent. There's no exterior screws or anything of that sort. Is and that so, unusual? Um, not really. The Xbox 360 was kind of the same way. Uh, you had to have these, well, I mean, you could do it with just uh, pry tools like this, but... They actually ended up making a custom tool wow. where you could, it's kind of like your fingers, where you clamp all of these uh, different clips at the same time right. as opposed to one by one, right. you know, that kind of thing. Right. Um, so over here, we have uh, the side panel, and this side panel is the first thing that we pried apart. Uh, and if you look at it, you can see all of these different clips that hold the uh, side panel in place. They all have to be released. Exactly. Sim and so simultaneously, we went, yeah. 
you know, one by one and just released all of the different clips and then the side panel just pops off like that. Awesome. And now it's easy. It looks like the top just comes right off almost. <laughs> that, that's, uh, I fixed it magic there, but that's not the case at all. Oh, oh. Um, with the pun in the word case. Uh, you can see on the back of this case, and that, that's why we did this in advance. Oh, I see. Yeah, so once you have, here, I'll put it to the main camera. Uh, once you have the case, up, um, or the side panel open, I should say, the case also has clips all across here. So all around the perimeter, there are various clips that, uh, just like with the side panel, you can imagine now it's being held all over the place. And so we had to use our uh, pry cards. And to, picks. I yeah, think there and, was a lot that we were using. Exactly. Because <laughs> you so, want to you want to depress or indent all of those clips, uh, and you so you got to kind of hold them in place before you can take the whole thing off. Right, and they reattach. Uh, if right. You, if you don't have anything holding them, yeah, in just place. clip back on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So is it? Should we presume that Microsoft has some sort of special tool to do that, or? Well, okay, so now that we have this part and we did the, you know, very unscientific brute force method of just, <laughs> you know, take it off. Uh, and thankfully, we didn't actually break anything. Um, now we can kind of look on the interior and get a better feel for how the thing is constructed. And so, you know, with that knowledge, we can construct either a custom tool or find one if Microsoft is making one available. Uh, because, you know, previous to opening it, we didn't know that, for example, this piece, which is actually the front, here, sorry, uh, the front right here is actually held in place with these clips. I know it's kind of dark, but there's basically clips there. So there might be some way to just remove this front panel uh, without um, much fuss once you kind of investigate inside and figure out how everything is constructed. Got it. All right. So thank you for saving time. Yes. <laughs> So an unknown uh, amount of time. It could have been minutes, could have been seconds, could have been hours. Well, okay. So when we open this console up, because this is our U.S. console, yeah. um, this probably took us mm, what, twenty-five minutes. Wow. It was, yeah, it was a little bit of time, and mm. and I think the most um, scary part was just not knowing to know what kind of force. And if right. you're a, yeah. a novice repairer, um, that's going to be the scariest part. Is definitely knowing when and when not to use force and that's what it came down to is just using a little bit of force and right. we and we didn't break anything uh, but again we're we're going to be looking for a better way of opening them in our repair guide so be looking out for that good good so we hold on to that yeah once this guy is off and we have this side panel room actually you know what can, can you give me that I, I forgot this is another one of those things that we find out after the fact uh so one thing we omitted in the teardown and maybe an exclusive, ladies and gentlemen. This is an exclusive. Yes. Uh, so the buttons are actually touch capacitive. Unfortunately, it's very difficult. On the front it. of the uh, box, there's a button for eject and there's a button for turning it on. Those buttons? Yeah, exactly. So pretty much... Um, Interesting. They're not physical buttons. They sense your uh, finger, yep. in effect, like an yep. iPad. So, so, you know, there's this cable that routes through the front, which is very precarious and... That's the one thing that if you just kind of like, let's say, free all the clips right. and just go boom, <laughs> uh, cable's going to come along with it, and you're probably going to either damage the front motherboard or like daughter board thing or the cable itself. Um, so if you do that, then um, you're going to have a bad time. So. Yeah, right. you know, I'm not surprised because they're soft touch buttons. You don't indent them. You just touch them, and they it's actually really nicely done. The eject button, you just... Yeah touch it and it ejects the disc. So I, that's actually nicely done. But be careful of that wire. Exactly. Yeah. And so uh, the only button that's actually a button is this side piece mm -hmm. uh, that has a, a little membrane and you could, you know, click it. All right. Uh, so anyway, that's, um, it was kind of interesting that we didn't see uh, during the teardown. And, uh, nice. You were just lucky during the original teardown. That you didn't... Well, I mean, we, we definitely disconnected the cable, but never... Figured to uh, turn it upside down and look right. at the buttons See themselves. what's there. Yeah. Cool. So our next step is going to be turning to, uh, we have our speaker here, um, which is not connected by any screws. It's wonderful. Yeah. It's, it's just, just lying there? Um, if you want to turn it for the camera, this little... It kind of it kind of has little holes that it, it uh, snaps into. Sure. Yeah. Um, 
So that's super easy. We love we love that. I don't even know what the speaker. I guess there's little chimes every once in a while. The thing when it turns it on, it goes chime. So, right. Yeah, it's very yeah, simple it little. Boot up sounds and stuff like yeah, that. So yeah. uh, always a good idea to remove the cable first. You know, as I use the Xbox One, it really becomes apparent that it is a PC. You know, we inst in, to use Netflix, you have to install it. To run a blue Blu-ray disc, you have to install a Blu-ray player. It's just like a PC with a kind of a simplified lean-back UI. Okay. So we'd expect yeah. inside to see something kind of like a PC. Don't want to break the bracket. Um, <laughs> Lord knows I've broken many brackets in the past. What do you do when so you again, break? Do you use super glue to glue it back together? Or? Yeah, it's a speaker. It doesn't. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to get a rattly Xbox. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, in the break room. <laughs> Somebody said it's not a speaker, it's the NSA microphone. But no, of course, that's what the Kinect is. You don't need a microphone. <laughs> You've got a Kinect. Yeah. Hey, are you guys so, going to disassemble the Kinect or the controller? We did the Kinect as well on the same day. All right. Uh, so that's that's up on our website. We have lots of awesome information about that. That was definitely um, upgraded. Oh, yeah. Uh, Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we kind of like the Kinect. It's pretty cool. You can tell um, when you use it. Uh, I mean, first of all, it's got a crystal clear image of you in your room. Uh, I had an ADP camera. Yeah, yeah I had to run and put pants exciting. on. And then uh, it also uh, does a much better job of uh, uh, when you want to play a game that uses Kinect, you don't have to get 10 feet away anymore. You don't have to move the furniture. You could do it much right. closer, which is a big improvement, I think. Yeah, it's a, it's pretty incredible technology. We it's it's a, it's fun to play around with yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so now we've now got we some screws. Is this a is this a Torx screw? A, what kind of screw are we seeing here? Um, pretty much all of the screws inside are T nines. T nine Torx screws. They're just various lengths. Okay. So these particular ones are shorter, but as you'll see, uh, some of the future ones are going to be like two inches in length. So that'll wow. be interesting. All right. So now we're taking off the Wi-Fi board. And again, that was only two T9 screws. So um, definitely when doing this, be careful of the cord there. Oh, okay, I see. That's That just pops right in and pops right off. They're just little metal clips that go into the shield. So it's not terribly difficult to pop them back in. And uh, let me just... Uh, to my side, see if there's anything else goofy. Um, there we go. There we go. Ah, so there's a little connector. So that looks like a Wi Fi card, almost like one would see in a PC and a couple of chips. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And it's, all a, right. it's an add on card, which is interesting. I presume that means that the module could be upgraded at some point. Not on the I motherboard. The reason why not? I mean, it just, you know, it's kind of, um, it looks to be like a proprietary, well, it's probably not a proprietary connector, but, you know, it's not something you could just go to right. Fry's Electronics and pick up. Right. Uh, but you definitely can just pop this case off and unplug this guy with minimal fuss. And right. it, it, opening the case will be nine tenths of the entire procedure. Unlike the PS4, the hard drive is not as not immediately accessible on this thing. Have we already voided the warranty? Yes. Uh, yes. First thing we did. <laughs> yep. First okay. thing we did. <laughs> <laughs> so those warranty yeah, stickers are, are on the outside case, so there's no way to go in this yeah. without voiding the warranty right away. Right. Okay. That was one thing I liked about the PS4 is that without voiding the warranty, you could get to the hard drive and easily upgrade it. Yeah. 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 And, Not and so here. That's pretty much the only thing on the PS4 that you can touch, right. which is probably what 90% of people will anyway. Right. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So th that's kind of the big difference between the two consoles, for better or worse. This really, Microsoft doesn't want you going inside this at all. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, funny enough, uh, just over the weekend, we uh, tried cloning the hard drive. And it didn't really work in our oh. favor. So the clone did not boot up, whereas ah. the original drive did. And again, that's an advantage to PS4. PS4, you could put any drive in, it would immediately work. Uh, Microsoft's done something like TiVo does. It somehow blessed the drive to make sure that uh, you don't put your own drives in there. Unfortunately. Yeah. Um, however, getting to it's not, not that hard. It's just, <laughs> what's the point? Well, right. At this it, point. Yeah. At this point. At this point. True. Big old muffin fan, very much like the PS4. Actually, this looks like it's even bigger than the PS4's fan. 
uh, underneath there. It is. The yeah. PS4 had a, I think, 85 millimeter, and this is a 112 millimeter fan. Wow. So Microsoft doesn't want any red rings of death this time around. No, and it's very quiet, which is wonderful. I don't know if you played a lot. With I haven't. Yet. Uh, yeah, the Xbox 360 sounded like a jet airplane in my living room. And this sound, you can't hear it. You literally yeah, cannot hear it. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. All I ever hear is that, you know, the DVD reading, you know, the, uh, 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 as it reads a DVD, but nothing else on this, which is nice. It's really quite quiet. And it seems, uh, it, it, does, it definitely has heat coming off of it, but it uh, seems like it's well cooled. Right. And that, uh, with a fan if, that size, I'd expect that. Don't put any books or if you have other consoles or something like that, don't put them on top of the one because... Um, the top has grates for this fan um, right. to you know, get airflow. And if you block the, like, let's say put a flat book on it and there's no gap, that's probably going to be um, a bad idea for the Xbox One. On the bright side, if the Rebel Forces wanted to destroy the Xbox One, there is an exhaust port easily available. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So you can... And, you know, the other thing, too, you guys were talking about the different size fans. And, and I think that's kind of the main benefit of large diameter fans is they don't have to spin as fast, AKA they don't have to be as noisy in order to provide the same amount right. of cool. So. Right, yeah, it's no surprise that both the uh, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One have a single very large uh, fan. Wow, those are, those are long screws. They go all the way down, don't they? Yes, yeah. yeah. Wow. And I'm almost finished. I think I have one more. Might be on the edge right there. Uh, yeah, and then we will be for done. Don't forget to give your screws to Gwendolyn so she can properly label them on the <laughs> magnetic board. All right. And they all seem to be the same length, which is nice. That there makes it easy. Yep. 40 of them, whatever it is. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Okay. So. Nice job, Gwendolyn. <laughs> Just pile them right there. See, I've labeled, I'm not even doing this, and I have cleverly labeled all of the screws on my magnetic board so that they all, I know exactly Except for this one. I don't, a piece of plastic. I don't know what the hell that is. Go on. All right, so, so. <laughs> there you go. So this is the big unveiling here. Um, Ooh. It's kind of like an unboxing, but cooler. But cooler. <laughs> no offense to anybody that does unboxing photos. Um, so this guy has a little connector here. Let me see. It's, I guess my hand's blocking it. Here we go. And so uh, that's where the remainder of that Wi-Fi cable goes through. Got so it. Yeah. you have... You that's know, actually wi nice that the Wi-Fi is outside of the metal shielding, so it really is protected from interference. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it gets direct um, accessibility. And, it, and it's right at the plastic edge of the box, so nothing in its way. So it's got to be a little bit careful. You never know, you know, when connectors might snap off. So there's the shield. Another ninja cable. Got to yeah. keep track of those sneaky little ninja cables. Yeah, yeah. We we learned our lesson many many a time in yeah. the past. Yeah. So, whenever you have any sort of uh, cover and you're opening for the first time and there's no guide, be just nice and gentle. Well, how do you do that? Do you do do you do it by feel or do you examine it? Do you look and try to look inside and see if there's anything there? You, uh, I mean, the golden rule of thumb is never yank. Right. You know, lift move, gently, move slowly. Deliberately, carefully. Exactly. Yeah. Patience. Yeah. I know we talked about that last time. Yeah. It is a virtue, I've heard. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Look at the size of that fan. Holy moly. Now, we, th we thought that the PS4 fan was some sort of custom design. I don't know if this is or if it's a stock kind of muffin fan. I'm not sure. Um, Looks pretty normal. Doesn't look like it has those weird Apple-style uh, blades. Yeah. yeah. I mean... Yeah. It's round. It's not a swirl fan. It's like more like a traditional PC fan, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and actually, if you look at the inside, I mean, this pretty much... It's a PC. Yeah. <laughs> Power supply. I see the optical drive. I mean, it looks like a PC. Yeah. Uh, okay, so, so, so actually, no power supply in here. That's um, right. It's external. Supplies. I forgot. It's external on the... Uh, yeah. On the uh, Xbox One, internal on the PS4. That's another that's big true. difference. So I guess what I thought was a power supply. That's actually the optical drive in the front, in the back, the hard drive. Yeah, yeah. there's the optical. Yeah. And there's the drive. That's a Blu-ray Blu-ray uh, DVD player. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Leo, 
Choose your own adventure. What would you like to do? <laughs> uh, I noticed that in the in your teardown, and I'm looking at the website, you started with the Blu-ray uh, disc connector. Okay. That's very obviously there. That's the big red cable uh, going, the data cable going to the uh, motherboard there. That seems like a pretty easy uh, pull. Out. The yellow one, is is that the power? Uh, so, so, I mean, we have uh, power and data right. going into it. So, you know. It looks like there's both yellow and red cables. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, um, the red ones are, as far as I can tell, let me double check, but I'm plugging it. Uh, but it looks like just the standard SATA connector. Yeah. Nothing crazy. Yeah, flat SATA, SATA wire. Like you would find on a PC. Yep. <laughs> There's a recurring theme here, and yeah, uh, well, it is a it's a x86 device. Yeah. yeah. So there it is. There you Just go. That, a little. That's yeah, a SATA cables. cable, all right. Yep. Nothing crazy. No tools necessary. Yeah. No, <laughs> well, and so you may have noticed that you know the hard drive is already wobbly. So yeah. these um, those screws know, held that in place. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Everything was being held in place by those screws. Once you take them out, you kind of have to be careful. Don't throw this at your mom or anything. It's going to get all over the place. So, What's that? So the yellow would be power then? I believe so, yeah. yeah. And is that a stock Blu-ray uh, disc player? It's hard to tell, I guess. Something, for, um, something you could replace, huh? This is a Philips and Light On Digital Solution. Yeah, tool. that's a stock Blu-ray DVD player. I love it. Sounds to me like yeah, yeah, the Light On. Yep. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, fancy camera. <laughs> there so, you go. There you go. I don't know if this kind of a faceplate, like if you know, let's say you had to replace the drive itself, um, you probably could take this plate off and yeah. you know just. Otherwise, it would look bad, but it would still be functional. Uh, the capacitive button, though, goes to electronics, so there is no button on the front face of that uh, optical drive. It goes to, it's a capacitive, a capacitive mm -hmm. button. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no buttons. Yeah. There aren't yeah. any buttons. So that's done, all, that's done all in software, so you don't have to worry about that. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, so there goes the Blu-ray drive. Um, next comes the hard drive, which, again... Wow, it really is loose. <laughs> And that's a lap, another a two and a half inch laptop drive, yep. like like the PS4. Yeah, it okay. it is the same. Okay, so underneath it's uh, held in place by these, uh, of course, black screws, so you can barely see them. But uh, there's the, there it is. So there's you know four screws that hold the hard drive on the bottom. Oh, there we go, up against the light. And um, standard two point five inch form factor. This a, particular one is a, a Samsung Momentus, so I guess it's a combination Seagate and Samsung. <laughs> and a 500 gig. Yep. In your teardown, you put it, you uh, fired it up and uh, uh, looked at the hard drive and found five NTFS partitions, 44 gigs for temp, 391 gig user content, 42.9 gig system support, a 12.8 gig uh, system update partition. And another system update partition that was 7.52 gigs. Both of the update partitions were empty. Um, but uh, surprisingly, the temp <laughs> drive was almost half full on an Xbox that had never been turned on. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is. Uh, but 391.9 uh, gigs of user uh, capacity on an empty, an empty drive. That's pretty good. And considering that games are sometimes as big as 50 gigabytes, um, that's probably needed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and from what I heard, at least um, there's no effect, like it's, there's no place on the Xbox system to show you how much uh, right. space is free. As far as I could tell, and, I didn't see anything. Right. Yeah. right. Uh, so uh, <laughs> you know, you kind of put in enough games up until it says no more. And That's then right. It's done. <laughs> and then you're gonna take one off. Yeah. <laughs> And nobody should ever need more than seven games at a time. That's Leo's rule. <laughs> never, never. Rule. You should not need like that. It. No. Okay. Um, wow, that fan is big. And that, given its location, it looks like it's it's probably positioned right over the CPU. Yes. Yeah. So underneath the fan, we have 
heat uh, sink. Uh, yeah, a nice really big heat sink. And, and the nice thing is they detach from each other pretty easily. Ah, good. What is the uh, what is that daughter card uh, that's on the front of the uh, case? What is that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's a mod module board. We call it a module board. Mm -hmm. Fancy thing for uh, do picking in the front. It's it's a thing that's attached. That's not of the motherboard, but it is. Mm -hmm. It's connected to the motherboard. It's a well, module so board. This connector here. Uh, that's where the front buttons hook up via that cable. Aha, uh -huh. aha. Uh -huh. So there's okay. the eject button and the power on button. Those go to that. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Let's see. Somebody exactly. said that uh, if if you didn't want to use it as a game machine, you could use it with a fan that size as a as a hovercraft. And I think they I think that's a good <laughs> mod. If anybody wants to make a hovering Xbox One, we can we'll feature you on the show. I'll remove that next. And the controller's uh, sensor, the controller is RF, so there would be an RF sensor on that as well, probably. Yeah, we have one of the controllers here. Have you have you played with yours? I have. I love it, but I want to take it apart. So uh, if we have time, do you like do you like the new um, D pad? <laughs> the D pad. There's a D oh oh yeah I, the uh, yeah. The D-pad is great. Why? Is that new? I didn't even notice. Is it different? Quite an upgrade. Yeah, yeah. I found um, it very easy. You know, the thing I hate most on these, and of course, when you first configure it, you've got to enter your password like 8,000 times. <laughs> and I found the D-pad to be very accurate for moving around on the on-screen keyboard. So I do like the D-pad. A lot more click. Yep. yep. It's very, like It's it. you know, click, 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 click. You know exactly where you are. So for right. that alone, I give it a two thumbs up. I do too. I like it. Two unbruised thumbs up. <laughs> um, yeah, but otherwise, it's fairly close to the original Xbox controller. But you know, it's an it's an upgraded Xbox controller. Right. Well, they did get rid of that battery pack on the back. It's still there. It's just you right. know, hit it. And the nice. battery life so far has been excellent. It came with uh, two uh, alkaline batteries, AA batteries, and um, I, th you know, uh, the the Polygon folks said it went for a week. Um, with heavy use, wow. I, yeah, it's. I think the, I'm, I'm of course going to put rechargeables in there, but uh, it seemed pretty good. So we got that module board off, and we're going to move on to the fan and the heatsink. And actually, uh, the ceremonial transfer of screws. Wonderful. <laughs> I love screws. There you go. <laughs> yeah. um, do you have? Okay, so the uh, the the drive itself. Um, I'll, the chat room wants to know the number on it. It's a Samsung Spinpoint M8 ST500LM012, uh, 5400 RPM, 500 gig drive, 8 megs, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, 8 megs of cache. It's a SATA 2 hard drive. It is a SATA 2. Yeah. Just like the PlayStation. Very much like the PS4, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we were super sad because it took us like four hours to get everything transferred from one drive to the other, and everything looks identical on a PC. So, you know, there's five partitions, all the same size, because it's a direct clone, but still, for some silly reason, uh, there's something in this drive that's not found on the other, or right. the Xbox itself is smart enough to figure out it's not the same drive. Right. So. Yeah, like I said, TiVo's did that too. They would so-called bless the drive so that it, it was a <laughs> TiVo drive. And right. it didn't take long for uh, modders to figure out what the blessing was and to write software that would do the same thing. So here we go. This is the bottom. There's half the bottom. Of your big RF, yeah. Big RF shield around that motherboard. That's good. I like all that shielding. Nice metal metal case for that thing. And so really what we have left now is the fan, the heat sink underneath, and then, of course, the CPU and motherboard. And like yeah. the like the PS4, a lot of air in there. It could yeah. be designed much tighter. I'm sure down the road, as they get to know the thermal characteristics and so forth, they could make compact versions of both of these consoles. The, the slim versions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I imagine yeah. an Xbox Slim in a couple of years. Yep. For sure. All right, so Look at all that air. Yeah. It is big, especially seeing that it, it's bigger than the PlayStation 4, and yet it doesn't have an internal power source. Right, right. That Do you, don't you think they could have put huh. it in there somewhere? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, again, because Microsoft's been so burnt, it cost them a billion and a half dollars to replace 
red-ringed Xbox 360s that I think that they weren't going to take a chance. They put the big fan That's in true. there. They got the power supply, which is another source of heat outside the box. Right. I don't mind so I don't know. If, you know, people say, oh, look at the PS4, no no power brick. But wait, you put it behind the credenza anyway. Right? I, it's not like it's sitting out there on display. Just gathering dust behind my shelving. <laughs> So uh, this is one of those things that can't be uh, translated just through motion alone. Uh, these screws that I'm removing, um, you know, there's a certain torque with any screw, and uh, these particular ones are not terribly easy to remove. Interesting. Not, not necessarily like they're super hard or anything, but um, the 54-bit driver kit that we have, it would take, uh, you know, quite the pinch on that driver because it's a fairly smooth shaft. Uh, in order to remove uh, these screws. So something like this, where it's just a standalone screwdriver, probably would work better. Um, especially given that, you know, you could buy this one T9 drive uh, screw uh, screwdriver and that's all you need for this. That's nice. I do like And we that. have this on our ProTech line as well. It's our ProTech screwdriver kit. Oh, um, this guy. Yep. You can hold which, it up for you. Which is where I stole the T9 from. <laughs> so we've got ah. a beautiful kit. You've yep. got a dedicated one. See, I have my I really like this one. Yeah, driver kit. But a dedicated little, one, if that's all you need, would be great. Yeah. It still has everything you need, like the Protex um, driver kit. But uh, this this one's just a little more heavy duty for those right. heavy duty jobs that you have. So I really that's like nice. this one. And, and this is this would qualify as the because you need a lot of torque to to loosen those screws. Yeah. Yeah. So that means what? They're machine tightened, or what? What does that mean? Why? Why would that be? It holds everything more securely. Okay, just <laughs> tighten the damn screw. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, seriously, it does. You, you know, the screws are actually um, a nice, uh, fine thread, meaning uh -huh. that mm -hmm. chances of them coming loose right. um, are not that significant. So, that you know, sense. if you accidentally drop the console or something like that, um, it's not going to just fall apart in the first. Right. Yeah. You might break the case on the outside because it's plastic, right. but. Right. At least the interior stuff is going to be... They're going to stick. Yeah. So before I do something... I just lift right off after you unplug. <laughs> so so <laughs> he's loosening both the heat sink and the fan that's all one module right, they're right now. they're connected, but only by clips. So uh, ah. they're easily taken apart. So he just unscrewed the heat sink, and now he's unplugged everything. Well, the fan is plugged to the board. I just want to make sure. <laughs> There's a, maybe he missed a screw somewhere. Well, that or sometimes the thermal paste uh, holds it nice and securely in there. And um, sometimes a, a twist could work where you just... You want to you know, break the suction. Exactly. Yeah. Just, so they are using thermal paste, not pads on this one. Or do we know? That's definitely a possibility. Um, yeah. I don't see ah, that in see, the teardown. This, this is why... Okay, so... My bad. My bad. Oh. <laughs> so, Miro has found something actually, additional. Yeah, exactly. You didn't so do step 18. <laughs> step 17 is actually... Step 18 is the Arnot shapes chicken crimpy, the panda yeah. biscuits, the yan yan, and the griffin's mallow puffs. That's step 18. Step 17... And those are that's an important step. Oh, yeah. the snack step is very important. That keeps you that keeps your hands steady, your breathing calm. That's a tight screw right there. Wow, listen to that sound. <laughs> wow. It's like chalk. <laughs> that's amazing. Uh, Wendelin Gay and Miro Jurek are doing a disassembly, if you're just tuning in, of the Xbox One. The first there iFixit.com's first American edition. They did do a New Zealand Teardown, which is on the site, ifixit.com. This is Miro's first time taking apart the Xbox One. But he's a pro, so... He's still wearing the Band-Aid from his PlayStation 4. Yeah, the wife said that, you know, it's probably not a good idea to show off the carnage to wear a Band-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> I once made a video, a build-your-own PC, this must have been 20 years ago, where I cut myself on a sharp edge of the case... And they didn't stop the cameras. They just kept going. The blood is pouring out. Yeah. I'm going, mm, oh, oh, that hurt. Well, you got to be careful on the sharp edges on these, oh, these cases. 
You know, there's still a blood stain on the Chipworks. Um, <laughs> oh no! Uh, that I totally forgot to clean up. And you so haven't kind of earned your and, stripes unless you got a cut or two. And I'm sorry That's if right. they're watching. You know, I apologize. I totally forgot. <laughs> So I see the copper tubing. Is there a heat pump on this uh, cooler? It's not just a, they're not just fans. I mean, the fins. It looks yeah. like hey. copper tubing under there. Yeah, yeah, in the back here. We'll, uh, we'll explore that in just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's take a look. Okay. Off, but uh, it looks like, let's see. Okay. So there are these on the side. And this is why I'm happy I looked at the teardown first before trying something silly. Um, there are these little screws that are holding actually, uh, I believe these are the shafts where the long screws came through. Um, so we gotta take those off first. And so, okay, the heat sink. What is that one called? Oh, that's the under? Oh, the, the okay. mid-frame under. Mid-frame, okay, mm -hmm. cool. And then you might wanna label this guy. Um, Let's put that with the right one. Yeah, right there. All right, so here comes this guy. This little plastic piece, nothing crazy. That's another one of those, right? Yeah, so maybe just kind of, so these clip right off the side. It's basically um, for these, right? Whereas this one is screwed in place. Yeah, so mm -hmm. let's just keep this piece along with the screw and then that way we know it's all Wonderful. on assembly. Okay, anything else before I... Nope, that's good. But wait, there's more. <laughs> How you doing, Leo? Uh, I'm just watching with bated breath. I know. I, I tried to build up suspen uh, suspense. Well, that's we, every one of these teardowns, there has to be a point where we're just biting our nails, and this is it. There's yeah. always something. <laughs> this is as close always as you get. Something. To a terrifying moment. <laughs> Whatever could it be? Oh, oh snap. look at that. He's got the whole motherboard out now. Well, so obviously okay. there's a screw on the motherboard holding it in place. Oh, there's yeah. That's, yeah. There's that X-shaped um, yeah. thing. It's underneath. That has, there's, so there's four additional screws. Isn't that funny? It's an Xbox, and they uh, they use an X to hold down the... Uh... An X brace? Mm-hmm. They're, okay. really, they're going overboard with their branding here. <laughs> That's is that a standard part though that X brace? Uh, it, it seems like um, pretty much stuff that I've seen in PCs in the past. Yeah, you know, they they have X braces. Maybe not these exact ones, but th they're not reinventing the wheel here. It's not an Easter uh, egg. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So now we got the motherboard out, and we're going to have to re release those four screws on the X brace. What kind of screws are those? Well, they should know, also be the T9. They're all well. T9s all the way through. You know, uh, there's actually no screws. Oh, uh, I it's think a clip? I already removed the screws. Uh, ah, so now you yeah. just pry it off. Well, the heat sink. The heat sink, right. Got it. Uh, Got but it. yeah, the, the brace itself needs to be uh, pried off first, and then we can pull up on the... Um, on the uh, HT Dutchy in the chat room says about 80% of the coolers use an X-brace like this. It's very common yeah. in uh, heat sinks. Okay, so... Use However, I love it that the Xbox One has an X brace in it. <laughs> I think they should have made it look like an Xbox One logo. It works for them. Yeah. I want to do something silly here, so let me, let me investigate this a little bit. So, uh, will you be using your Xbox for gaming, or do you like the idea how it's really taking a new... Um, view on how to experience TV and communication. Yeah, I'm, I'm really intrigued at it as a, as a home entertainment device. In fact, sure. the fact that you can say uh, Xbox watch HBO and it, and it knows where HBO is and it tunes it in uh, is really cool. Um, the, yeah. the Xbox uh, very easily and quickly figured out how to control my uh, cable box. Of course, you give it your zip code and then you tell it who your provider is so it knows what your guide is. They have a, something called the One Guide that knows what shows are available to you. Um, it also, I put in my uh, AV receiver information. The only thing it didn't know, it, it, I have a pretty new Samsung TV that it didn't know about. And I've heard from others that some of the older Pioneer Kuros also are not in the database. That doesn't mean they couldn't easily be added. But I love the idea of watching a movie and saying, Xbox pause, and the movie pauses. 
Sure. Uh, some of those features really, I played with quite a bit and really seem quite good. And, and, and it's a very capable gaming machine. I mean, uh, the P probably if you're, uh, all you care about is gaming, you'd probably choose a PS4 just because of its slightly higher well, specs. Well, unless you're, you're, you're looking mm. for a specific game like Halo. But right. Well, I was playing Rise. It's quite fun. Really like yeah. it. Um, uh, some Assassin's Creed 3. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, and I also tried Battlefield 4 and Call of Duty Ghosts. Uh, they all look good. I know they're 720p, not 1080p, uh, but right. I can't tell the difference. It seems like they all look pretty good. And, uh, you know, the, the, there were some launch day hiccups because so many people were activating Xbox Ones. You know, mm -hmm. I thought I had saved my, or, or I said, you can't save your avatar changes. I made some avatar changes to make it look more like me and uh, couldn't save them, but what was interesting is the next day when I was logged in, it had saved them, even though it said it hadn't. So right, that, Xbox Live Gold said that you you could save your avatar and your achievements. It just said at the time I had done it all, and it said no, uh, we're having trouble right now, and it, and and so and I had trouble getting YouTube to work at first. Uh, okay. It works now, so there were some launch day, uh, as one might expect, some launch day issues because uh, so many people are using it and activating it at the same time. But I think it works. Uh, I'm happy. It seems to work quite well. Um, yeah. My gamer tag is Chief Twit Leo. If anybody wants to add me, watch me do really <laughs> boring things. Watch me get fragged and you know destroyed and all the games. I'm stuck in Assassin's Creed Three. I can't. Can't. I'm just wandering an island. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's something more here, but I uh, I don't know. You know, I'm climbing around and. <clears throat> yeah, I really like that it's, um, you know, an entertainment center for sure. But I, I'm wondering if it's um, maybe expecting a lot out of live television. Because really, I mean, what do we watch live television for but sports and news? Well, I mean, for we got instance, it's got a great NFL channel with lots of NFL videos and stuff. Nothing much different from what you'd see on the web, but it is a lean back experience. And you're, you sure. know, you're sitting in your armchair and it is on your big screen TV. I, I actually like it. And you know, I, I, what I'm saying, I guess, is it's a it's a completely competent gaming machine. Uh, limited number of games, as with the PS4, uh, but uh, I'm sure we'll have many on both platforms. And I like the additional uh, features. I like being able to talk to my TV. Uh, I haven't been able yeah. to play. Skype wasn't working uh, last time I checked, so I'm hoping Skype. You know, the apparently the Connect will zoom in on you. Uh, the the Connect camera is fabulous. I did. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I my family's in Florida, so I yeah. I love being able to hang out with them on um, Google. But if, if if I have this, this is just cuts down on everything. I can see them on 47 inches. So. Right, right. <laughs> my TV has Xbox has a Skype camera and a Skype as well. So I'm, I kind of have an embarrassment of riches. I'll compare the two probably. I'll be doing my review of the Xbox One on uh, Tuesday on our Before You Buy uh, show. It is kind of annoying that you have to pay $70 and join Xbox Live in order to use Netflix and YouTube. But uh, sure. nothing new. Well, That's what the convenience, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So How's it going? Yeah, it's going, just not in a good way. We're stalling for you. This is stalling worthy of uh, an Apollo launch here. Yeah, I know. It's really weird because I've taken off, I don't know, 100 cross braces in the past. Uh, this one seems to be held under um, tension, essentially, on both sides. Ah. And so there's no actual mechanism to, as far as I can tell, uh, to just, you know, un uncover it or, like, un release some clip or something of that sort. In the teardown, we're <clears throat> using a screwdriver, which doesn't make any sense because there's no screw in there. So It looks like they're just trying to release it with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe they just go ahead. Go ahead, just pr wrench it right. Just pr pry it right off there. Come on. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> that's that's how things break. Um, and well, and in fact, the, the screwdriver shaft is deflecting as I'm trying to pull. Oh, it off. so there's quite a bit of tension on there. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And all so right. I'm not. You know, I might be silly, and there might be some like you just do this, and all of a sudden. Well, isn't there someone you can call? Ghostbusters. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Come on, there's got. Hey, uh, this is the this is the problem of doing one of the. This is, I guess, the first U.S. teardown of the Xbox One on the iPhone. Right. Yeah. Right. So. And, and the thing is, you, you know, that that's the that's the one thing that we advise people is like, don't follow our teardown to actually take apart your device because what ends up happening is 
in the interest of brevity, we don't show every screw being removed, every right. little bracket. So like all of these plastic thingamajigs, uh, that wasn't even part of the teardown anywhere, just because who cares about the 25th screw that we removed? Right. Um, so with something like this, we had already removed it with some manner. Um, it says on the uh, on the website a flick of the spudger, but that seems <laughs> if that yeah. were the case, you would have done it. Yeah, like using I this. almost flicked yeah. the sponge right into my other hand. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not have more blood. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm under pressure here. Um, so I'm going to do this for like one more minute. If I can't get it free, we're just going to flip it, remove the fan. Okay, and, and look at it there. We definitely have pictures of how the right. CPU looks underneath. Well, we're running out of time, too. So. Yeah, so. yeah, and like and like he said, we don't show everything necessarily with our teardowns, but of course our repair videos will have absolutely every right. step um, yeah. and our repair guides. Um, yeah. we, we don't miss a beat on those to make sure that you know exactly what you're doing and you have the confidence to do it. Yeah. Well, while we're doing that, let me just show you my Xbox avatar. Do you think that looks like me? I like him. <laughs> <It's cute. laughs> I think it looks like me. I think that's pretty close. I yeah, make, that's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like the hat. Well, you know, you <laughs> I wear a lot of hats. Oh, no. Oh, no. Do we have another injury? No. Okay. You scared me. 100%. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. No blood. Just stab myself Just a little, a little bit. A little sting. See, that's when I know the Xbox has bested me, and I'm not going to screw with it anymore. Wow. But luckily, the fan does detach from the heat sink wow. um, without any problem. So right. we can just pop that off. So I will do that. And That'll we know, that is it the same AMD uh, chip as in the PlayStation 4, the Jaguar uh, processor? Uh, it does have the same processor. Um, we don't know if it's the same uh, part the, number. I believe they run at different speeds, the oh, GPU. Man. Okay. Let me grab the other spudger that I lost in my savvy. Uh, oh, no, we're losing things. <laughs> Wait a minute. See, I've, went, like, I've carefully preserved all of the screws that I have used uh, on my lovely magnetic project mat from ifixit.com. What are you taking apart? There's only five <laughs> screws there. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I really, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. I like the three question marks. Don't know <laughs> yeah, I don't know what this part to. is, but I've got it there. And, uh, you know, one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you follow The Simpsons, but we like to do the Dr. Nick approach to tear down. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm going to tear <laughs> down an <laughs> Xbox <laughs> One. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Well, at least we're having fun doing it. Absolutely. It's frustrating. I just, uh, you know, so will you just give up or what will you do? I mean, uh, no, it's again with the no. patience, even if it takes even all day. If it takes all day. So but, I got half of the fan removed right here. It's just two retaining clips. There you go. Side. I see it. I see it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Pop them right off. Yep. All righty. So, that is a, that is a hefty heat sink on that sucker. Yeah, so yeah. there's the fan, just the basic, I mean, it looks just like any other CPU cooler. Looks like cooler a stock CPU cooler, yep, yep. Yep. Uh, and then here's the, <laughs> no spudgers. <laughs> there's the nice and lovely heat sink with the piping. Wow, is that moiréing? That's beautiful. That's a, that's a nice uh, nice job on the heat sink there. Looks like yeah. a somewhat more uh, sophisticated heat sink than on the PS4. But again, you understand that it cost Microsoft so much Due to overheating on the Xbox 360, they weren't going to take any chances on this one. So pretty much that's that. Uh, you know, we still have the heat sink. I think you could see the piping that's kind of being routed through the yeah. Uh, yeah. sink itself. And you could even see that X brace that's uh, giving me hassles on the other side. Um, let's see. What other fun it's stuff? Over the processor, which we can't see. But right. Yeah. Well, I'll leave, you know, people can go to ifixit.com and see the, the fully torn down New Zealand version. We're going to leave you guys to continue to work uh, on this. I know you, uh, I know you uh, will not give up. You will not rest. Well, until I mean, that... pretty much that's it. Um, uh, that's the console in a nutshell aside from the heatsink. So right there on step 20, you could see the uncovered CPU. All the chips, everything, awesome. all the fun stuff.
Very nice. Yeah, I don't know what we're doing there. That's weird. I think maybe it's just mostly showing what's happening as opposed to a direct action. Gwendolyn Gay, Miro, uh, du uh, ju say, say it again. Sorry, it's Jurek. Jurek. <laughs> uh huh. I'm sorry, Mira Jurek. It's easy, simple. Yeah. It's just like it's spelled, D G A U. G anyway. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the hey, you guys are great. With that one. You guys know. are great. Are you Gwendolyn? You going to Florida for Thanksgiving? Going home? Not for Thanksgiving, but uh, I will be going for Christmas. I'm, right. I'm very excited. How about you, Miro? You're gonna you're gonna stay here for the holidays? Yeah, I have family um, about 60 miles away. So Good. I'll be well, I them. wish you both a great Turkey Day. I don't All know right, when our next teardown will be. I think that we're probably done with the real, you know, the, any hot new products for the time being, unless you want to, unless you want to take apart this uh, Nokia 3520. I guess, I guess this would be an interesting teardown since it doesn't look like there's any way to take it apart at all. Must be glue. Yeah. Got to be glue. Yep. Just like an iPad. But uh, hey, thank you. You guys do a great job. iFixit.com. People want to see the step by step. And again, uh, I think this is worth repeating. Uh, the tear the initial teardown is not your guide. There will be a repair guide later with all the details you need exactly. when the time comes. But uh, And that's what iFixit does so well, these uh, repair guides for all kinds of products, even cars, dishwashers, the works. Everything. Uh, thank you, guys. It's really fun. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Leo. Thanks. iFixit.com. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.